Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Lego chocolate block or candy bar tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to make these gorgeous, simple, no-bake Lego chocolate treats. The things that you'll need for today's tutorial, I've got a silicone Lego mould, you can also use a plastic Lego mould. These are really widely available on eBay and you shouldn't pay more than about $5 for one. I've got a Ziploc bag and a pair of scissors, a spoon, some melted either dark or milk chocolate, you can also use coloured candy melts here. I'm using just a craft mat, but you'll need a cutting board, a knife, I've got my chosen candy. So I'm going with Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Snickers bars and mini M&Ms today, but you can use whatever candy your heart desires. So let's get started. Now, the first thing that you want to do is we're going to just fill the very, very top section of our little silicone moulds. So you want to open your Ziploc bag and just tip in your chocolate and I'm not going to tip it all in at the moment just because I know that I'm going to want to microwave that again before I fill my moulds. Whenever you're working with chocolate and chocolate moulds you want that chocolate to be as freshly melted and as fluid as possible. Alright so I'm going to snip off just a relatively fine corner from the tip of my piping bag and we're going to just fill in these dots. Now the dots here are the most important thing that's where your chocolate's not going to go if anything so make sure that you're really squeezing that chocolate in but you only really want a really thin layer of chocolate on this base. So I'm forcing the chocolate right into those dots and then just spreading it over. Now you want to take this opportunity to give it a few really good hard smacks on the bench. The parts that you want to pay particular attention to, you want to make sure that all of your corners are filled, all of your sides are filled and of course we're also making sure that we've got as much of that chocolate already forced out into those little dots as possible. All right, I think I've tapped enough. They're gonna go off into the fridge to completely set. So while those ones are off in the fridge setting, you can take your chosen chocolate or candy and you just wanna chop it really, really nice and finely. Obviously my mini M&Ms don't need terribly much work, but the other pieces that I've chosen, my Snickers and my Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, I want them chopped really nice and fine. So coming back from the fridge and our little pieces are now all set. You've got all of your candy and you've got your freshly melted chocolate. So now it's as easy as just filling in some of your little candy. So you can decide what you want I'm going to do some Snickers, I'm going to do some Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and I'm going to do some mini M&Ms. The one thing that you do want to consider here is try not to have it going all the way out to the edges of each of your little sections of Lego because otherwise you're going to see those through the sides of your Lego pieces. If you need to here you can take a knife just to move some of those fillings just away from the very very edges but like I said it doesn't really matter. You also want to make sure here that your fillings aren't coming over the top of your Lego mould because you want to make sure that you get a nice flat base on your pieces of Lego. Take the rest of your chocolate now and you'll notice I got a new Ziploc bag that last one was way too messy and you just want to once again just snip off that nice little fine little corner don't go too fine here, this is actually going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit chunkier. And you want to start by squeezing your filling down the sides of your Lego and around all the edges. Put quite a bit of pressure in when you're squeezing that in and then just fill out the other sections. Try not to go over the top edge of your Lego moulds with that chocolate because otherwise you're just going to have to neaten it off and it's easier if you can just keep everything kind of constrained in each of those little Lego portions. It saves you having to scrape and neaten later. Don't take too long with this because we don't want that first Lego brick to start setting too much before we've got a chance to fill them all and tap them off to get any air out. All right, now that you've got all of your chocolate in there, you want to really tap, tap, tap and get all of those air pockets out once again. Now I say you should tap here until you stop seeing those little air pockets come to the surface and you'll see them kind of pop when they get to the surface. So don't confuse the little air pockets with like a little bulge of an M&M, but you really want to make sure that you're tapping out any excess. They're going to go back off into the fridge to set. Alright, so coming back from the fridge or the freezer and make sure that you've really given them adequate time to set. You want to release them by really just peeling them away from that silicone mould. So I'm pushing at the bottom here with my fingers to make sure that I'm releasing all of those little top buttons. And out comes your gorgeous little candy Lego. You can see that this one's an M&M. There's a tiny bit of M&M poking through the side, but that's not too bad. So you just want to remove all of your little Lego pieces and you can make as many or as few of those as you like. If you happen to have any of the little buttons from the top of your little Lego candy bars not come out of the mold, it may just be that it needs another five or so minutes in the fridge to set. So pop it back in, bring it out and give it another go. But don't be too rough when you're releasing them and really push from the bottom. I hope that you guys have loved this tutorial, these really, really cute little Lego chocolate blocks. If you love Lego, make sure that you check out my Lego cupcakes and also my giant Lego cupcake for the ultimate Lego party. 
As always, thanks very much for tuning in to Michael Keggy Diction.